I kind of had a question about what a negative frequency looks like in a real system. Like, obviously, I don't think there's negative sound frequencies, but I'm I'm sure there's like negative uh, RF frequencies, and I don't ah, really understand what it means. No, so there are not there are not negative RF frequencies. Um, okay, so that's a good question. The the question is, what does a negative frequency look like in a real system? Yeah, like what? Yeah, what is it basically? What what does it represent? Right. So, um, in in the real world, uh, all the radio waves are, are real functions. And for any real function, it's th there are positive frequencies. And if you take the spectrum of anything, uh, it's going to be symmetric. So whatever, whatever spectrum you normally think of a signal having, uh, it's going to have just as much stuff on one side as on the other side. So, so negative frequencies. So let's, let's imagine that the only thing being transmitted over the air, or maybe it's, it's better, the only thing being transmitted over a wire is uh, a particular um, radio wave that, so this is a frequency spectrum now, that's centered out at 100 megahertz, so like, like my signal generator. Let's imagine that the frequency spectrum of that out at 100 megahertz, it's, it has some, some particular shape. Like, I don't know, like it goes down like this and then it cuts off. So in the real world, if this were the, the spectrum of what's going through the air, since it's a real signal, it's made up of sines and cosines. And whenever you have sines and cosines, uh, you can make them out of equal amounts of positive complex exponential and negative complex exponential. So the frequency spectrum of this signal is gonna look symmetric minus 100 megahertz. And this is just because of the fact that, uh, you know, cosine of two pi F T is equal amounts E to the plus I two pi f t and e to the minus i two pi f t. So if the frequency spectrum is just plotting the strength of these coefficients, there's just as much stuff at positive f as in as negative f for any f and any real signals made up of a bunch of cosines and a bunch of sines and sine, a real sine of two pi f t. You can also write this as one over half the plus i, so some amount of honest to God positive frequency, plus here it's over 2i, e to the minus i, 2 pi f t. When I'm plotting a power spectrum like this, I'm just taking the magnitude. So the magnitude of this is half, the magnitude of this is a half, the magnitude of that is a half, the magnitude of that is a half. Whether I have a sine or a cosine or some, some combination of sine and cosine, uh, which, which forms a real tone at 100 megahertz, I'm adding to that a whole bunch of other real tones around 100 megahertz. Whatever positive, whatever coefficients attached to the positive frequency stuff, I have equal and opposite amounts of coefficients attached to the negative frequency stuff. So, so in, in audio or in radio frequency, um, we, we almost only ever plot one side of this because it's, it's symmetric, the, the, the spectrum is symmetric. Now, what the software defined radio does, and this is actually what I'm gonna talk about next, is it translates this stuff out at 100 megahertz, it translates it down to be centered around zero. And so there's some, some spectrum of stuff around zero. So it'll take a little piece of spectrum around here and the uh, amount of spectrum that you take depends on your sample rate. So the faster you can sample, the more spectrum you'll take. But let's just say you're, you're sort of taking from here to here and you're translating that bandwidth of spectrum down, not to be centered around hundred megahertz, but to be centered around zero. And in order to do this, 
now the this is no longer a symmetric spectrum, right? There's more stuff on the negative frequency side than there is on the positive frequency side. And so in order to do this, you, you need complex numbers. So this is, this is where the, the negative frequencies come in, and this is where the complex numbers come in. So, so if you were to take what the software defined radio gives you, its, it's spectrum is exactly this little piece of spectrum translated down. But in order to make this out of uh, a sum or an integral of complex exponentials, you need different amounts of positive complex exponential uh, as compared to negative complex exponential. So this is why, uh, this is why you need, need complex numbers. And this is where the negative frequencies come in. They only come in after you've done this translation down to what's called baseband. And when we transmit, we'll, we'll do a similar kind of inverse operation. We'll take a sequence of complex numbers with some spectrum that's not symmetric, and we'll feed it into the software defined radio, and it will bump it up to be centered around some frequency, but it's transmitting a real wave. So whatever happens up here, uh, since it's a real wave that's going to come out of the antenna, uh, is going to be mirrored down here at, at negative, negative frequencies. So I, I hope that helps a little bit. I mean, we haven't really talked about the, the kind of arbitrary signals made of, made of lots and lots of different frequencies, but um, this, is, this is a start. And I would say the next thing I'm gonna talk about for the next maybe 15 minutes is how the software defined radio actually does this. Like what's actually going on inside of the software defined radio. So uh, did, that, did that help, or at least did it motivate the next, um, the next thing? Oh, God, I can't write this low. I have to remember not to write so low. Did that at least address your, yes, your question, did. if not answer it completely? So yeah. so yeah, it's not that audio is different from RF in some, in some fundamental way. Both when they're out in the real world, there are uh, you can think of it as there are only positive frequencies, or at least if you were to, to plot it uh, in this way, where the plot is like how much positive complex exponential versus how much negative exp complex exponential. Any real signal has equal amounts of positive complex exponential, negative complex exponential. So whatever spectrum you have here, you could just mirror it to get the other side. But it's the translation process to take some super fast signal at radio frequencies and take a tiny little piece of that and translate it down to, to baseband, to be low frequencies around zero, where you, uh, where you end up with negative frequencies. But you know, at the end of the day, everything is, everything is real. So all the electronics have to deal with actual, actual real signals. And that's, that's what I'll talk about now. It might make sense. So if you watch that little seven minute video I recorded last night, if you go back and watch it again, now that you've seen some stuff about complex numbers um, and, and that discussion that I just gave, maybe, maybe certain things will make more sense, right? So I, in that video, I had a signal generator that I had tuned to a particular real RF frequency. It was putting out a cosine or whatever at, you know, at some high frequency. And the software defined radio was always tuned to exactly 100 megahertz. And depending on whether the, the signal generator was a little bit above or a little bit below, the software defined radio, when I plotted the spectrum, showed uh, a complex exponential that was a little bit above zero or a little bit below zero hertz, uh, hertz because it just translated everything down to be around zero hertz. 